and welcome to yet another video so today I'm actually going to be discussing something that I think should be general public knowledge but I think is not really spoken about so I hope you enjoy this video So being a medical doctor, I am always exposed to a variety of different conditions, bacteria, diseases, and generally my job is quite high risk. And what happened recently was that I was exposed to the HI virus and that is quite alarming and very scary and understandably so, I was actually very anxious throughout the entire thing. I was assisting in a cesarean section and coincidentally blood splattered into my eyes and I had to go through the entire process of starting antiretrovirals to prevent getting exposed to HIV. So I thought, do the general public actually know what you do in this specific situation? and where to go and i think this is the premise of this particular video so the very first thing that i thought of is the sexual assault victims as well as rape victims um when you're having protected sex and the condom breaks what do you do do you know the status of your partner and where do you go so this is the general step-by-step -step plan of what you should do if you find yourself in this particular situation so the very first thing you need to do is to not panic there are ways and means to prevent you getting HIV. Um, the very first thing you need to ensure you do is get yourself to a doctor, either your GP or get yourself to a public facility such as any clinic, any hospital, especially any casualty or emergency department that will be able to assist you within 72 hours. 72 hours is the mark that we use um, in order for us to actually treat you because once 72 hours has lapsed, we can't actually administer any medication because the risk and the chances of you um, basically getting exposed to the HIV virus is already too high. So the very first thing, as I mentioned, get yourself to a doctor within 72 hours so we can next start the next steps. So the next step is we ask for more information or basically history. We get information on the incident that happened as well as the status of the person that you were exposed to. So that's very important to ascertain the risk that you are at at the current moment. The next part is making sure that we know what your status is because we can't really commence the medication if we don't know what your status is. So we first do an HIV test and have pre-counseling, basically explain to you what it means to do the test as well as what results um, can pertain to you. So if you do get a positive result, we don't st start the medication because basically it means that you have already been exposed to the virus and we need to start commencing the antiretroviral medication that is going to be lifelong. Um, this is absolutely not a life sentence because there are so many regimens right now that are so helpful to people and catered to every individual. We make sure that we do blood tests to ensure that we know what your liver function is, we know what your kidney function is, and we know what potential side effects might affect you that might really damage those particular organs. So it's important that you understand that we do need to start this particular medication because it is life-saving and literally people live up to a full lifespan um, on the medication and if you do comply and you do live a very healthy lifestyle and you do and try to understand what the, the disease is, you can really live a good and healthy life. If the result is negative, then we do start you on medication for 28 days. We call it PIP. 
It stands for post-exposure prophylaxis. And what that basically means is that for the next 28 days, you are going to be put on antiretrovirals. It depends on what the healthcare practitioner decides on what would be best for you. And a lot of the times patients are really put on just one medication or one pill that they take once a day for 28 days and around the same time to ensure that the time does not lapse. And there are quite a variety of side effects that the patient can experience on this particular medication, which doesn't make the experience very pleasant. Um, I've experienced it myself. Um, it can vary from things like fatigue to basically diarrhea, um, a very intense gastrointestinal symptoms like stomach cramps, as well as some insomnia and bad dreams. Um, but every single person is very different and so you shouldn't really be afraid to start the medication because once again it is something that will protect you in the long term. Um, in occupational health, basically me getting a needle stick injury or me being exposed to any, any sort of um, danger in my profession, there is a 0.3 chance of actually getting or contracting HIV from that particular exposure. It's also very important to understand that from the next time, from the time that you're exposed to the next six months, you shouldn't um, basically conduct in any sort of unprotected sex because this is the time that you need to ensure that you protect the next person. Um, once you've been started on the medication, we do a repeat HIV test um, a month later to ascertain that you still are negative. Then we do a repeat HIV test six months after um, to once again ascertain that you're still negative. There is a window period basically between the time that you are exposed to HIV and the time that your body potentially is HIV positive. And when we do the test, it's very possible that we can't actually detect it on the rapid test. Um, so yes, I hope that this information is very helpful to you. It's so important that you understand that these type of situations sometimes cannot be prevented. Do not blame yourself. Um, it's so important that you get yourself to a healthcare practitioner or any sort of healthcare facility that can help you. And if you want any more information, you are very welcome to go to any um, healthcare professional and they can give you any more information. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it very helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video.